Welcome to the Wisdom of the Heart. In today's episode, I will be the host. Our regular host today is going to bring a very important topic for our discussion, living in relationship. So we have Lynn Kidd speaking to us from Maryland, just outside Washington, D.C. And Lynn is going to start us off with a few passages from A Course of Love. Welcome, Lynn. It's good to have you here today. Yeah, thank you, Rodrigo. It's Wonderful to be here as a guest <laughs> for a change. And yeah, of course, this is our dialogue. So we're both going to um, be offering some uh, wisdom of the heart in this um, conversation. So yeah, what I wanted to look at today for my topic is living in relationship. And uh, this is really speaking to me now. And I wanted to start us off with a couple of um, passages from uh, the Course, which is the first book of A Course of Love. And it's chapter 27, Being. But the whole theme of this is living in relationship. And um, the way it's speaking to me is that the living in true holy relationship which is our wholeness is actually a new state of being and it's a new state of knowing it's not the old way of going outside of ourselves mm -hmm. to know who we are in truth it's the it's the knowing that comes from wholeheartedness where the, our minds and hearts are joined as one and uh, so anyway, I want to start us out with a couple of passages, and then I have a really beautiful uh, personal experience to share that happened yesterday in our Course of Love Zoom group, and then we'll just expand from there. But I wanted to start out on paragraph 14 in chapter 27 being, and it says, to live in relationship is to accept all that is happening in the present as your present reality and as a call to be in relationship with it. It is the willingness to set aside judgment so that you're not contemplating what should be happening rather than what is happening. It looks past perceptions of others to relationship and wholeness. To live in relationship is to live in harmony, even with conflict. It is an understanding that if conflict arises in your present experience, that there's something to be learned from this, from your relationship with the conflict. And then briefly, living in relationship is living from your center, the heart of yourself, capital S, is it is complete reliance on relationship rather than on the mind. And I'm gonna editorialize there and say, rather than the thinking conceptual mind, because what we're speaking of here is the wholeheartedness, which is the mind and heart as one, or as I like to say, the mind that's resting and the heart. Thus your action reflects the proper response to the relationship that is occurring in the present rather than to your preconceived notions of others, the previous judgments that your mind once held and once made and relies upon out of habit and or your considerations of what the situation might mean to your future. And so, yeah, this to me is speaking you know, the, the relationship is just stepping back for a moment, the course of love. And I believe, you know, the course of miracles as well says that Christ, Christ is the bridge uh, that is the connection between 
who we are and God. And, and, and in essence, it's, it's all one. There's really no separation. But the way it's speaking to me is that Christ is our shared identity. That's our shared identity and oneness, the Christ that we are. And for anyone out there, just to say that, you know, if that word doesn't resonate, it's feel free to substitute, you know, anything for that. For Christ, you can say love, presence, your higher self, whatever. But this, it's that, it's that place within us that feels that connection. And I wanted to share something really beautiful that happened yesterday in our Course of Love Zoom group. And it speaks of living in relationship. That someone was really struggling at the beginning of the group and she was sharing an experience that she was having and she was in conflict, you know, but the fact that she was able to trust and she had the courage to surrender into the moment in the space of our shared identity where we were all holding the space, we were all, you know, being there for each other in this holy relationship. And from that space, something happened, something very miraculous happened. And her struggles and everything that she was in conflict with, uh, as the Course of Love calls it, the tension of opposites, where, you know, we have this constant creative tension that's going on, where you know, there's a disturbance that may be arising in the present moment, but in the backdrop, we know that we're being held in love and there's that trust that's there. And she was able to step into that trust and fully surrender to this moment as we all held the space in our shared identity. And she was able to bring it all to the light of awareness and something transformed. And by the end of the call, she had completely shifted. I mean, she touched something very precious within herself. And it was because where two or more are gathered, came together, we held that space of love. There was, we, there was a true wholeness there in the relationship. There was no judgment. And she was able to touch something deep within herself, a preciousness that came upon her. And she became alive in that moment and everything was brought to the light of awareness and transformed. And by the end of the call, she was smiling. I mean, you could see her light and everything was transformed. And it was like a resurrection moment for her. And then she had written a, a note to us later on how much, how much healing that she experienced in this space of joining that we all had yesterday. And then, you know, I had thought of the, um, you know, the Course in Miracles lesson where it says, when I'm healed, I'm not healed alone. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, you know, this is like, the, this is the true power of holy relationship, of living in relationship, of when we're healed, we're not healed alone, and resting in that trust and resting in God. And um, it was very, very powerful. And so I wanted to share that experience. Mm -hmm. And then just to briefly look at um, a couple sentences toward the end of this chapter that's really speaking to me as well. And Rodrigo, feel free to jump in anytime. Okay. Where it says, the uh, second to last paragraph, it says, um, how will you know when you have achieved the state of grace in which you were created and that you are living in relationship, you will know by the certainty that you feel. And then it says, well, what if you don't feel this certainty? And then it says, the very last paragraph says, your willingness will now depend on whether or not you trust. And so that, you know, to me, it's, you know, this whole notion of being the acceptance of what is as it speaks to living in the present moment you know and I, I love to quote that line from A Course in Miracles where it says you know to be born again is to let the past go and to look without condemnation upon the present it's about 
the willingness to have that relationship with all the feelings that are arising and whatever, whatever's coming up in this moment. And uh, it does, it does involve that trust and surrender. Um, and that, and that's the tension of opposites, you know, it's like the creative tension is, there's always something going on where we're, we're, we're being, we're, we're being, we're feeling the human experience, but we're also, we know that love is there, God is there, but there's not that certainty yet or that full confidence to express it. And I feel like that that's when it all clicks. You know, I saw it yesterday, that healing moment where it's, it's all transformed in the light of awareness where, you know, nothing's denied. It's all, it's all, it's all elevated at the holy place of the heart. And so uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll pause for a moment. I don't know if you had any thoughts on that or you had a response to any of that so far. <laughs> Thank you very much. You have brought uh, such an important topic and you have touched upon so many important uh, questions that uh, directly determine the quality of our lives because as long as we keep rejecting what is mm -hmm. rejecting relationships perceiving mm -hmm. relationships as if they could hurt us as if we had to avoid certain relationships or certain types of experiences we will be denying one part of ourselves we will be unable to come to know who we are and i also remember what the course of law says that the difference between the life we currently have and the life we would like to experience is only the need for us to express ourselves and we cannot express ourselves without relationship it's mm -hmm. a relationship that we share who we are and hence mm -hmm. discover and experience who we are yeah. And mention judgment. It's one of the very key factors that change completely the way we see and experience relationships. Judgment. So joining or being in relationship implies forgiveness. Implies being in a state in which your mind is not already judging that this shouldn't be like this. Or this person shouldn't be interacting with me in this way uh, right now. It's quite the contrary, it's trusting. And you also mentioned this important point, is the trust that the current relationship we have, either with something apparently outside of us or someone outside of us, or a relationship that's taking place with our own feelings, a relationship with our own inner psychic processes that is going to reveal to us greater aspects of who we are and also to reveal to us aspects of who we are not that we need to be discovered so that they can be transcended yeah and I, yeah i love that and uh what was coming up too is yeah it's it's about again it's about that whole experience and it's not it's not just you know, my experience, it's, it's your experience, it's everyone's experience, because really none of us are separate. And that's, yeah. you know, that's the, that was the whole, you know, issue with the ego being addressed. And of course, in miracles was the belief in separation. Um, but through true forgiveness, and now, you know, this radical acceptance of what is, um, you know, it's, it's, we're moving into, that wholeness yeah this holy acceptance of what is there's there's a great line back in um it's day 28 which is um a beautiful chapter two it talks about from externally to internally directed experience and i feel like that's what this relationship also is calling us to is is to move back inwardly and and to really feel into what's going on if and, and it's painful sometimes, you know, to really look at ourselves and to see what's really there and the parts of ourselves that have been repressed and denied. Mm. And, um, you know, there's another, <laughs> I, I love the Course in Miracles too. And I just see so many, you know, um, 
correlations and 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 um, just complementary passages that they speak to me so deeply as just one continuous thread of um, of all of this. And and there's a great line in and of course in miracles it says. Um, um, let me think of it here. Um, what is concealed cannot be loved, so it must be feared. Absolutely. And so again, that that's it. It's it's about the trust and the surrender, and to in this moment, bringing it all, and and to have that trust that we're being held in love no matter what. And I and again, I, I think that's the, the whole prodigal son and daughter. You know what you want to call it, prodigal son and daughter. The whole parable of the prodigal son and daughter, where you know, he was able to finally claim his own innocence yeah. when the father outreached the arms when he was still down the road. And, you know, he was just like embracing him and said, I love you no matter what you are loved. What I wanted to say is uh, another way that I wanted to mention is this new way of being and trust and a new way of knowing is um, also it comes not necessarily in in words. I think that sometimes when we're sharing and we're in a group, and I also felt this yesterday too. It was like there was a there was an energy that was palpable. There was something like I don't know what it was, but there was like an electricity in the air yesterday when we were in our group, and you could feel something coming alive. And this new way of knowing, it's not necessarily always about language because sometimes what I'm experiencing, I feel like language is, sometimes it's dualistic. And we're, and we're trying to describe something from the unknown that's becoming known. And it's really hard sometimes to put it in the words. And sometimes I, I have a hard time doing that. <laughs> and so, but the, the new ways of knowing sometimes can just be a sensation or a deep feeling that arises, or sometimes I'll get like this flood of grace, or you feel a tingling, or, you know, like I said yesterday, there was like an electricity in the group, and you could feel this palpable energy. And so I don't think it's just, you know, about the old ways of sharing necessarily, you know, we, we share from our hearts, but it's, I don't know. It's, it's something, it's a, it's a living experience that breathes and comes alive. It, it doesn't just come from an intellectual knowing it's something much deeper. And I think that's what the wholeheartedness is really the mind and heart joined as one. And really there's no difference really between the mind and heart. You know, the course of love says that the only reason it, it's, it treated those separately in the beginning is because that's how we saw it. We saw it as two separate things, but really it's all, it's one mind and one heart. You know, it's the center of ourself. It's the bridge, it's the Christ. It's our shared, you know, our shared identity in Christ or love. And that's it. And that's what bridges all of it. And it's very hard for me now to go back to these old ways where I'm just in this conceptualized mind that's just filled with chatter. I love the space of not knowing, you know, this whole, I don't know what anything is for is brings so much freedom. Like I don't have to try to figure any of it out. I can just come with a, a blank slate and let something new arise and be born. And that's it to be born again, you know, is, is to let the past go. And that's, that's where freedom is for me. <laughs> so I just wanted to bring that in too about the acceptance of what is and, you know, how I'm seeing that relating, you know, in my experiences, because it's not about accepting what's going on outside of myself. It's accepting who I am and how I'm showing up in this experience. And that's authentic and that's real. And from there, when I touch that place where I'm, I'm connected to the capital S self, that's where the true response arises. I'm resting in the inner wisdom of the self, capital S. And there's no past or interference. 
And again, you know, this is just an invitation to everyone. And it's, I'm not always there either. And it's okay. You know, <laughs> It's not to beat ourselves up about it. But it's just the willingness to see, see that and to trust that it's all, it's all working out for <laughs> our hardest good, no matter what's happening. We're not, it's, everything is for us. You know, it's not happening to us. And, um, you know, as A Course of Love says, that the universe or God is benevolent. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's all these these human experiences that have been hard and challenging and the suffering and the struggle i mean i think you know i've i haven't met anyone including myself i've gone through deep depression anxiety suicidal ideation all of it i mean i haven't met anyone in my life who hasn't had this been through dark nights of the soul or you know struggles and challenging and it just seems like you know, it's part of it. And, um, but the fact that I can trust and know that love holds me, that God holds me right here in this moment. And that when there's a struggle or a disturbance or a conflict that's arising, there's something to be learned from it. Yeah. And that, you know, I can look at it. I don't have to attach to it. I don't have to go back to the old ways and patterns of thinking. And I can love who I am and love myself in this moment. And, and then I'm able to go back and rest in God. You know, as it says in the Course in Miracles, you know, as we rest in God, you know, a bird with broken wings begins to sing, begins to sing again. And a brook or stream long dry, dried up be, begins to flow again. And that's the, that's, the, that's the living waters of truth right there. And, we, and when we rest in God, you know, the world is born anew. And um, so that's the beauty of it all. And, and that's what I'm, I'm trying to share and invite others into in this dialogue. So, Rodrigo, do you have a response? <laughs> Living in relationship. It's yeah. a way for us to know who we are. Yeah. We might believe that by just uh, sitting alone in meditation and looking inward would be enough for me to be enlightened or to know who I am. But actually, this is just the beginning. It is, it's important that we also sit with us, that we also be within ourselves. But it is equally and fundamentally important that we lose our fear of expressing ourselves, of being in relationship, accepting who we are now, because we cannot change unless we embrace and accept what is now. And relationships then become simply our mirror. That is where we look back, reflected back into ourselves, whatever we needed to discover. And that's why it's important what you highlighted, that this acceptance includes even accepting that at some moments I don't feel well about what's happened. Or I am in conflict within myself. There is an inner conflict. Because unless and until I accept that this is happening within me, I'm going to project it out there and I am be in conflict with the, the others, huh? apparently with the others, but it's just mirroring a conflict that arises within myself. So I'm sure we are very grateful to hear this precious pose of wisdom that you brought to us today and sharing your personal experiences, your group experience, and I'm sure we could extend this for a long time because you have touched upon such important points that um, we can relate to. Today, we will have to stop now. And perhaps on another occasion, we can have another meeting with you to explore deeper this subject of relationships and living in relationship. For today, we would like to thank 
our viewers who have chosen to spend their time here with us in this dialogue. What Elimi and I have shared are just the, the fruits of our own personal experience. And it's important that each one of us, as we read A Course of Love, A Course in Miracles, have our own experiences, have our own interpretation or understanding. So there is no right or wrong here. Thank you, Lynn, for sharing all that you have shared with us today. And we will see our viewers next time. Our Lynn will come back next episode with another topic, with another guest. So thank you for being here. Mm -hmm.